Hi, my name is Corey Goss, and in this video, I'll be introducing you to some of the assertion debug capabilities within our SimVision debug solution. In particular, this is what we'll be covering within this video. So I'm now going to move over to our demo, and this is, again, the same demo environment we've been using in other videos within this series. To begin, what I'm going to do is introduce you to the probe commands that I've used within this demonstration to actually capture the information that we'll be looking at within the waveform windows. So the first thing that I did was I actually opened a database. And we do that through the database open command. And then I have probe commands. And these probe commands create probes for various levels of hierarchy. And by putting the additional dash assertions switch on the command line, I can save additional assertion state information to the waveform window, or sorry, to the waveform database so that I can view it in the waveform window later. In addition, what I've also done is thrown a dash transaction switch. This allows me to visualize assertions as transactions in addition to the state information, and we'll see that later on in the waveform window when I bring that up. So I'm going to now run my simulation, and I'm going to run the same environment that I've run on previous demonstration videos. I'm going to run in GUI mode. We're going to launch uh, an interactive simulation here. And I'm not going to walk through an explanation of the environment. Uh, I'm just going to run the simulation. And what we're going to do is we're going to encounter an assertion here. And this assertion will fire. Uh, and it basically tells us that we have an X being detected on an output of one of the bits, one or several of the bits of a bus inside of a read bus X checker. So if you look, what we've done in the console window is we've actually included hyperlinks for various components within this message. So if I click on the left side here, this would take me directly to the source of this assertion. It would open in scope with uh, value annotation um, uh, being shown if, if I've selected that. I can jump directly to the timestamp in the waveform window, or I can click on this link here, which I'm going to do, and this will open up the assertion browser, and I can see my assertion shown right here. This is the failure. It's color coded in red, and you can see that it has a failed count of one. All right. Now, the assertion browser can be opened by clicking on this hierarchical reference, but it can also be opened through clicking in any of the other SimVision windows on the Send to toolbar. Right. You can see it right here, or you can just say Windows New and Assertion Browser. Now, the Assertion Browser itself is a great way to actually um, take a look at all the assertions within your design. Okay, they're color coded to let you know um, whether they've been successful or whether they failed or whether they're currently active. We have the current state. You can see they're active, inactive, finished, and so forth. And you can uh, filter based on that, those states down in the bottom here. All right, you can also filter by type, whether it's a cover statement, assume, um, assert, and so forth. Right. Uh, you can also sort any of these columns. So notice we have here disabled count, finished count, failed count. I can always click on the um, uh, click on any of these columns to actually resort things according to what I'd like to see. Now I can also right click on any assertion that I have, and there's a full right mouse button menu available inside the assertion browser. So you can see here what I've chosen to do. Uh, sorry, I can display only assertion messages. Uh, from this particular instance of the X checker, or I can display all assertions only within the module called check X, which is actually the name of the mo name the module name of the instance for the read bus X checker. Um, I can send the assertion out to waveform, watch, source, or a new one of those windows. I can turn the assertion on or off, or I can also set it to be off on a failure. I can also break on change or set a breakpoint on this particular assertion or create a probe and so forth. Okay, I'm going to actually send this assertion out to the waveform window. And you'll note that not only do we send the assertion, but we also send all of the contributing signals that are part of that assertion. So here I'm going to leave this waveform window open and now I'm going to actually click on the source browser. So I click on this hyperlink here and this opens up the source browser. And additionally, I could have done that from the assertion browser just by double clicking on the assertion itself, and that will actually open the source as well. So you can see the annotated values of all of the contributing signals that are part of this particular assertion that's failing right now. You can see that the state has gone from finished to failed, 
And if I want to jump to the correct time in which this assertion is fired, I can always just click on the timestamp right here. And this takes me to the exact point where the assertion has failed. You can see the state has changed to failed. You can see all the contributing signals. If you want, you can zoom out a little bit and you can see that at some point, all of these bits on this bus have actually changed over to a value of X. Now this is looking at the assertion state and the contributing signals. Now we can also view assertions as transactions. So if I want, I can actually throw the transaction into the waveform window too. So to get to the transaction, I'm just going to right click on the assertion and I'm going to say send this over to the design browser. And for every assertion in the uh, level of hierarchy you see in the design browser, you'll also see transactions that are named appropriately. So this is the bus check X7 to 0. There's also a transaction bus check X7 to 0. And if I just click and drag this over into the waveform, I'm now looking at this assertion shown as a transaction. And I'm just going to run for a tiny little bit more, 10 nanoseconds here, to be able to uh, zoom out a little bit more and show you what the representation of a transaction looks like. So in this case, this assertion is an instantaneous transaction. Uh, so it's executed at one point in time. So you could see that the transaction shows up as a strip here. Um, and we have a little X that's added onto the end, uh, onto the bottom, sorry. That represents the failure time. Now, you can also have multi-cycle assertions that consume time. They have a begin and an end point. So let's take a look at one of those. Now remember, I had recorded transactions for several lo locations within the hierarchy. So if I go down to my receiver, and if I filter away in the design browser to only look at transactions and assertions, and I can even filter farther to only look at transactions, there is an assertion that is a multi-cycle assertion called TR output our output counter T. So if I grab this and if I send this into the into the waveform window just by clicking and dragging, you'll see here is what a multi-cycle assertion looks like in the waveform window. You can see it has a clear begin and a clear end point and um, the color coding here indicates that this was a successful finish point. Now if this had failed, this would be a red transaction that shows up here. And if, this was, if there were multiple threads of this assertion running in parallel, then what you can do is you can just click on the plus sign here, and that would actually expand out the assertions to be able to show you all of the threads that are running in parallel. Now from here, you should be able to get a good idea of what's causing the failure of the assertion. You have the information needed for all the contributing signals. You have the transaction-related information all within the waveform window and um, you should be able to do further debug there. Now this is just a basic introduction to some of the debug features for assertions. Keep your eye open for future videos on more advanced debug solutions in terms of assertions.